Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, just a, another video and in this video I want to talk about this article that was shared with me and it's in line with one of the videos I made when I was talking about the private ledger sidechains and why no created token would work in that space except for XRP, especially when it comes to a worldwide solution to provide interoperability between banks and liquidity. This article was made in 2019, the Ripple CEO talking about the JPM coin. Even though he's talking about the JPM coin, bear in mind what he says applies to any form of centralized token, not just the JPM coin. And it's also a good article for people that think the JPM coin may be a potential threat to XRP, or it may be used within the private side chains to replace XRP. So he says, the Ripple, C the Ripple CEO says, JPM coin lacks interoperability. Just use the dollar, I don't get it. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says, the recently announced digital asset from United States bank J giant JPM Chase lacks the interoperability that would make it a significant innovation. Garlinghouse made his remarks during an interview at the fourth annual DC blockchain summit in Washington DC on March 6. As Cointelegraph has reported, JP Morgan Chase announced the forthcoming launch of its new blockchain settlement offering in mid-February, a stablecoin dubbed JPM coin, to be backed one-to-one -one by the bank's USD reserves. The JPM coin has created their own blockchain settlement token, JP um, Morgan Chase, called JPM coin, and it's basically a stablecoin that's backed to the dollar. Alluding to multiple industry commentators, suggestions that the bank's coin could be a direct competitor to Ripple's XRP, and people are saying that, oh, this new JPM coin could compete with Ripple's XRP. And Brad Garlinghouse is dismissing this claim and saying the coin lacks interoperability. Garlinghouse dismissed the coin's usefulness due to the fact that it remains a proprietary in-house asset. You hear that? Exactly what I'm talking about when I, when, I, when I explain to you that it's important that the token that's going to be used for liquidity and interoperability has to be decentralized and it's going to be a neutral bridge liquidity token. And the key features that makes XRP unique above JPM coin is the fact that it's decentralized, it's neutral, and those two features are characteristics that the JPM coin does not have. It's a proprietary in-house asset. In other words, it's owned by JPM Chase. They control it, they govern it, and it's their token. It's not decentralized, it's centralized. It's not neutral. So this basically what's, is what separates JPM coin from XRP. And it's important that you understand this is because it's the fact that XRP is decentralized, neutral, and it has the characteristics of being a bridge asset that makes it attractive to banks over the JPM coin. So Garlinghouse dismissed the coin's usefulness due to the fact that it remains a proprietary in-house asset and that its exclusivity is likely to lead each major bank to issuing its own coin. Exactly, because why would a bank decide to, decide to use the JPM coin when they know it's a coin owned by JP Morgan Chase? They control that coin. So why would another bank around somewhere else in the world say, okay, I would accept um, JPM's coin, which they own and control. Instead of doing that, what would they do? They would create their own token. So it leads to fragmentation again in the space because each central bank or each bank would decide to create their own stable coin. And what do we have? We have a world full of banks, each having their own blockchain-based stable coin. So how do we make all these banks interoperable with each other? What's the solution? They're not going to accept each other's coins. They don't want to accept each other's coins. So how do we do it? We have to have a token that is trustless. And what token is that? What, which which the best token that fits that purpose? XRP. And why does it fit that purpose? Because it's decentralized, it's neutral, and people don't understand what I mean by neutral. When I say neutral, it's impartial, it's agnostic, it's not biased to any particular country, bank, entity, anyone can use it. It provides that level playing field and no entity has control and governance over it.
because it's decentralized. No, there's no sole entity. Okay, so it's a neutral and it acts as a bridge asset and also a liquidity token. So, and this is the token XRP that would help eradicate the fragmentation that, that would exist between all these banking institutions when they all create their own token because for a stable coin because they're not going to accept JP Morgan Chase's coin in the private layers. And Brad Garlinghouse was saying this in 2019. This, according to him, will lead to, oh, exactly lead to the exact same fragmentation, exactly as I um, explained, that characterizes the financial services industry today. So there's a quote. This guy from Morgan Stanley was interviewing me last week and I asked him, so is Morgan Stanley going to use the JPM coin? Probably not. Will Citi use it? These are other banks. Will PNC? And the answer is no. So we're going to have all these different coins and we're back to where we are. There's a lack of interoperability. And that's why he said the JPM coin lacks interoperability because no banks will use it. And the reason why no banks will use it because it's a centralized token owned by a JPM. So they will just create their own token that they own and they will need a solution for interoperability and what comes in, what fits that solution perfectly well is the JPM coin. Just as I, sorry, is the XRP. Just as I explained in my videos, when all these banks have their private network side chains and they all build their own tokens, they're going to need a solution for interoperability and the best crypto that fits that criteria for them and they can source it by the federator on the XRPL is XRP. So you don't have to worry about the JP Morgan chip, JPM coin. You don't have to worry about XRP2. You don't have to worry about any token being created by any entity because it would not compete with the decentralized neutral nature of XRP. So Garlinghouse further weighed in on JPM's coin apparent exclusivity, quipping that, let's think about this. JPM announced the JPM coin for institutional customers. If you give them a dollar as deposit, they'll give you a JPM coin that you then can move on the JPM ledger. Wait a minute, just use the dollar. I really don't understand what problem that solves. So he's, he's basically saying, what's the purpose of the coin? Just use the dollar instead of, instead of their coin anyways. Throughout the interview, the sole thing that Garlinghouse conceded to JPM coin was the potentially positive effect for the blockchain and crypto industry to have players such as JPM leaning in. That's the one good thing I'll say about this, he joked. So the only good thing he's saying is that the fact that we have banks coming into blockchain, even if they're creating their own, coin, their own token, as previously, and it is a good thing in a way, because all these banks creating their own CBDCs, okay, means they are in the blockchain crypto space. And it also, in my opinion, leads them to become closer to adopting XRP as the solution for interoperability between all their tokens. As previously reported, the research arm of top crypto exchange Binance has similarly judged that as a proprietary and centralized network, JPM coin is unlikely to be tapped by competitors in the banking sector, who may well choose to release their own native digital tokens in the future. And this is what the Binance has apparently said, that the other banks won't use JPM's centralized coin and they will just likely just create their own which causes fra fragmentation in terms of interbank settlement binance research further argued that as a closed network solution exactly jpm coin is for now unlikely to directly compete with xrp there you have it this was said in 2019 it's important you understand this because when people come out with this token is going to compete with xrp is it okay just look at how the token was created who owns the token? As soon as you see it's a centralized solution, it's governed by a centralized entity, it's not decentralized, then you know this asset is not a threat in any way to XRP as a competitor because XRP is decentralized, it's neutral. Okay, so given the latter's ambition to serve as a multi bank mediator currency, referring to XRP, between both fiat cryptocurrencies and any fiduciary product. And that will make, and that's exactly what makes XRP the perfect mediator due to its characteristics of being decentralized and neutral. Binance nonetheless stated that internally, JPM coin could have a significant material impact in improving the cost and time efficiency of traditional financial services. Garlinghouse has previously stated that JPM coin misses the point of crypto. You get that? They miss the point of crypto because in crypto, we want decentralization. We don't want a 
centralized token, arguing that introducing a closed network today is like launching AOL after Netscape's IPO. Basically, there you have it. You have nothing to worry about with JPM coin or any other token banks use in within their closed loop systems on the private ledger. Because when it comes to being interoperable with each other and needing that medium to exchange their CBDCs with each other because they won't want to accept each other's CBDCs, okay, they're going to need an asset that neither bank controls and that is neutral, impartial, agnostic, decentralized, and this asset also provides them with liquidity and that asset is XRP and Brad Garlinghouse was telling us this in 2019 and that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so as to not miss my next video.